Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the meeting. Uh, we'll get started. It's exactly 6.30, so we'll start on time. I don't know what time we'll end, but I brought a toothbrush and a change of clothes, so, you know, whatever we need to do, I'm okay. So uh, what I'd like to do is go around the room if we could, introduce ourselves. Uh, don't just tell us your name, tell us, um, you know, so everybody will know your name, where you live, how long you've been on council or trustee or whatever, how long you've been in the community. We'd like to know something about you. So if we could, we'll get started. I'll let Julie start. Oh, excellent. Uh, Julie Reese, I'm a Bethel Township trustee, uh, newly elected, and I've been in the township on and off since 1972, graduated from Bethel High School. Okay, I'm Don Black. Uh, I've lived in the township since I was 10 years old on Singer Road. I suppose I'll die there. Um, I've only been a township trustee for about two years now. Uh, I was always busy with a career, so didn't quite get started uh, early as I'd like to have. Uh, I still do work for the Operating Engineers Training Program and uh, live down on Singer Road, south end of the township, and uh, still farm some, so welcome everybody. Beth? Hi, I'm Beth Van Heron. I've been a township trustee since 2005, and I've lived here also a long time, like those guys, and we're glad you guys came tonight. Thank you. I'm Debbie Watson. I've been the fiscal officer for Bethel Township for 19 years, and I uh, raised my children here at Bethel. I'm Andy Earhart. I'm the township administrator and also the fire chief, so I wear both of those hats. Uh, I've been here since 2009, and thank, uh, like to thank, thank the city of New Carlisle for coming over this evening. Uh, Hello, I'm Jen Huber. Uh, I'm not an elected or appointed official. I'm uh, sorry. At that. I'm Jen Huber. I'm an attorney with a law firm. Um, I'm here on behalf of the township and not an elected official. Um, I do have family in the area though, so I got to visit with them tonight before coming here. So thanks for having me out. Hi, Jake Jeffries, law director for New Carlisle. Randy Bridge, city manager for New Carlisle. I've been employed with the city uh, this October for a decade. And thank you for hosting. I'm Ben Vaughn. I'm a city councilman. I was appointed uh, this past January to city council in New Carlisle. I believe it was January, somewhere in there. Uh, lived in New Carlisle and Bethel Township both my pretty much my whole life. Uh, so 46 years. There was a little stint where I lived in Troy, but. Um, for just a couple years, but for the most part, I've been around this area and grown up in this area. So um, glad to be here, glad to meet with you guys. So thank you. I'm Bill Cook. I'm also a uh, city councilman for the city, lifetime and lifelong resident of the city of New Carlisle. I'm Dale Grimm. I'm the vice mayor of the city of New Carlisle. I was appointed to count, uh, elected to council. I took office January of 20. I was uh, elected vice mayor this past January. I am a transplant. I raised my family in Springfield. I've been in New Carlisle for 10 years now, and I love it here. And thank you, Bethel Township, for hosting it and for inviting us. Hi, my name is Mike Lowry. I'm the mayor of the city of New Carlisle. Uh, I've been on city council now for 10 years. I've lived my entire life in New Carlisle, 44 years. Uh, my, my three kids, my wife, and all my majority of my immediate family lives within the city of New Carlisle. And we, uh, we love the area, and we're glad to be a part of it. And again, thank you for inviting us and hosting the event tonight. Thank you. Dan Roadwald, I was... Uh, Point to city council uh, about two years ago now. A uh, long, long life resident of New Carlisle. Uh, sure about it. I'm William Lindsay. Uh, was re-elected with a two with a two-year uh, split between the two times. Uh, 
took office in January. The, I used to live here in Bethel Township. I lived here for, I believe I told the Beth that it was like 28 years I lived here. And then we sold and uh, moved to New Carlisle. I first went on council in 2016. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Peggy Eggleston. I've been on council a little over two years now, and uh, my parents moved to New Carlisle the year before I was born, so I've been there all my life. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess on the agenda we got opening comments. Did everybody get this handout? And I'm asking all of you people, did you all get the handout from the attorney? Uh, they're over here on the table. Uh, kind of explains the uh, annexation. I thought that was a good place to start. And uh, I'm not going to read it word for word, but we'll uh, look at it a minute. Uh, so that we get on the same page as, as annexation and what uh, we see is going on. Um, as we look down this, it, asks, or it says a regular annexation. That says petitions by at least 51% of the property owners. Well, there's only one property owner on the one we're interested in, uh, Jim Scott and his sister, I believe it is, Phyllis. Uh, then there's the expedited type one annexation. Again, it talks about petitions by all the property owners. And then we come down to an expedited type two annexation which is the most common. It's a petition by all of the property owners within the territory proposed to be annexed with or without the consent of the municipality and townships. The territory proposed to be annexed will not be excluded from the township unless otherwise provided by an annexation agreement or a cooperative economic development agreement, uh, CETA. And if we look at the, the rest of this, uh, as we go down, uh, just a few of these questions, if you would uh, uh, like to, to look at this on the back of the next page. It says the process for all, almost all annexation types are driven by the owners of the property, and that is what we have here. Uh, Jim Scott wants to sell his property to a developer and uh, annex it to the city of New Carlisle. Typically, the owner of the property seeking to be annexed has the authority to select which type they want to pursue, uh, recognizing that there are often concurrent uh, conversations with the municipality. Uh, based on our what we see, we think it'll be an expedited type two. Uh, a township may only object on any of the seven criteria listed. And those, those are listed there, but what you're really looking for is if they don't meet a technical requirement of the annexation. This is not a general basis on which a township can object. Even if an objection is filed, the county could still determine that the petition does not meet all of the requirements and approve it. All of this is to say that the township's statutory ability to object to an annexation, especially especially an expedited type two, is extremely limited at best. If a parcel of land is surrounded by a municipality, does it automatically become annexed? No, it's not an automatic procedure. We know that the owner of the property, that has to be what they want to do, and that's what's going on here. Can annexation cross a roadway? Yes, a road does not block annexation. In an annexation, what happens to the school district borders? The school district borders do not change. So if that property is annexed to New Carlisle, those kids would still go to Bethel High School unless there's some kind of agreement between Bethel High School and Tecumseh, which is very unlikely that that would happen. But the school lines does not automatically change. 
One, the next one says, when a property is annexed, do the boundary lines for the township change? Uh, it says, if a parcel is annexed in an expedited type two, uh, the boundary lines for the township do not change unless and until the boundary lines are specifically conformed. Conforming means the municipality's boundary lines are redrawn to completely remove the parcels from the township. We do not know that at this time. Maybe we'll get to talk about some of that uh, here tonight. As we look on down, it talks about uh, the people being able to vote, and it also talks about uh, the taxes. Property owners, residents can vote in the township and the municipality elections and must pay the applicable property taxes for both jurisdictions. That is, if we don't reach an agreement to uh, confirm or conform the boundary lines. Okay, as we turn to the next page, we can see here, uh, this is just for more our residents than anything, prior annexations of township land occurred under earlier annexation laws. The laws have changed over that time period. Carriage trails and park town boundary lines have been conformed, and their residents are not part of Bethel Township. That is why they do not pay township taxes or vote in township elections. As detailed above, though, they do pay Bethel local taxes. Okay, when a property is annexed, do the boundary lines for the county change? No. Why would a property owner want to annex? I guess we'd have to ask him, but the biggest reason here is they want to build houses, more houses than what our zoning would allow. Okay? Uh, the other things is water and sewer, things like that. Do township residents, let's listen to this one two or three times. Do township residents get to vote on annexation? No. Annexation is not an issue that is voted upon. When we look at that, that's township residents, that's us three trustees. We do not get a vote on this. If we got a vote on it, it'd probably be pretty easy. Can an annexation be reversed? The proper answer is yes. Somebody would have to show us where that's ever happened because uh, it hardly ever happens. Okay. How much of Bethel Township has been annexed so far and when? And looking at our records, Bethel Township so far has lost 1,030 acres to annexation since 1988. Now that sounds like a lot of land, and that is a lot of land. I'd like to own that, but that's a lot of land. But it's still only 5% of the township. We know we have this 260 acres here uh, outside of Brant that may be annexed. We don't know anything new on that. And then we're talking this 115 acres with New Carlisle. The 3.8 mil levy says, wasn't it supposed to stop annexation? It is our understanding that the 3.8 mil levy was passed by voters in 2003. That was 19 years ago. As a general fund levy to work to fight annexation. Thanks to this levy, the trustees planning and matching grant funds, the township now has water and sewer along the southern end of the township. This access to utility infrastructure means the township can accommodate denser development in areas vulnerable to annexation rather than those properties annexing to obtain utility service in a nearby municipality. It is the township's hope that the available infrastructure will help persuade property owners and or developers to use the township infrastructure and keep the property in the township. So that 3.8 mil levy has been used very wisely. Uh, people here in Brant have uh, good water and uh, 
that's about the only thing that saved us from the annexation so far. It's not a guarantee, but it certainly helps. Can the uh, township incorporate as a village? You could if we had at least 800 people per square mile and at least 200 square miles. Currently our township, we have 144 people per square mile, so we're not close to being able to incorporate as a village. The township population, you can read there, is 4,758. Can the township become a limited home rule township? There's a statutory process for adopting limited home rule. However, having home rule authority does not give a township any additional authority to block or object to annexation by a municipality. Not gonna read the, the example, but that's pretty clear. Home rule will not work for us. Why didn't the township buy the property and create a park? Township ownership of the land does not solve the annexation issue. If the property is owned by a government entity, it can be used by a municipality to access and annex property on the other side of it. So that wouldn't have done a thing for us, but I can tell you the, a big reason we didn't buy it, we don't have any money to buy something like that. That's pretty simple. Why didn't the township buy the property and then sell it to someone who wants to keep it in the township? For a township to dispose or sell property, the sale shall be by a public auction or by sealed bid to the highest bidder. ORC is Ohio Revised Code. The township would not have unilateral control over the who purchased or their intentions for the property. Farm grounds worth $10,000 an acre, roughly. Development lands worth well over 20,000. So that tells you why, you know, uh, you can't buy something for 20,000 and sell it for 10, and it seemed like a good deal no matter how many times you tell yourself. I just wanted to go over that. The attorney put this together. I think it's excellent. I think it should have helped answer a few questions here tonight. Um, we, as a township, are opposed to the annexation. They know that. Uh, that's what interests us. They're with the city of New Carlisle. They represent their uh, residents, and they believe that's what's best for New Carlisle. So we have to talk back and forth and see what can be worked out. You know, what can we do that none of us is totally happy, but none of us is totally mad? You know, where can we meet on some kind of ground uh, and work something out? That's what we're interested in, I believe. So, that was a long, I think he should have used a bigger font or something for opening comments from the Board of Trustees. But, Julie, do you have anything, or Beth? I think we can let them Okay, so. We will go with opening comments from New Carlisle Council. And we do have cookies, and I was supposed to tell you that we got a men's restroom and a women's restroom. And um, it's a little bit warm in here, but uh, we was all griping just a month ago how cold it was, so just sit back and enjoy it. We'll be okay. All right. Randy, I don't know who's going to give your... Uh, Talk, but go for it. Got to use the mic. I can't. No, that's what I was going to ask. All right. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of you have been to our council meetings. I'm going to thank. Uh, Ms. Reese that's come to our meeting and spoke, and she uh, has definitely came and spoke with a lot of passion about what she feels is right. Um, for me personally, I'm not going to speak for anybody up here. You know, we still have a lot to learn. You know, they have not officially presented it to our board, which is coming up next week, and I think most of you probably are aware of that. Uh, I mean, we do have, you know, probably a good idea of what they're going to present officially at that meeting. Um, you know, traffic studies are being done by the city of New Carlisle on our main roads because that's a big concern. You know, New Carlisle. Uh, on Main Street, you know, in the middle of the day, around 4 to 5 o'clock, it gets a little hectic. I wouldn't say it's horrible in, in the grand scheme of other cities, but uh, yeah, it gets a little tight uh, throughout the day. Um, 
But uh, for me personally, and you nailed it, I want to do what I think the citizens would want, what's best for the city as far as, uh, you know, t the tax base, and, you know, what will bring a better future to the city of New Carlisle tax dollars or be able to uh, to move the city in the right direction to bring, um, you know, new business. I, you know, a lot of people say that, it, that, well, new houses will never bring new business. Well, I, that's just, I mean, I think just the chat of this development alone has sparked new business already, even though it hasn't even come to fruition all the way. Um, so, you know, new business, uh, you know, we hear a lot of people saying, well, we want this type of a business or, uh, you know, whatever, Applebee's or whatever it may be. You know, I, you, you can't have all these newer businesses that a lot of people want without growth. I'm not saying that this is the answer to give us exactly what we want or what the citizens have asked for, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. I'm not saying this particular development, but I'm saying in general growth. Um, you know, I've lived in New Carlisle, like I said, for 44 years, and for the most part, other than Twin Creeks, it has stayed the same. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people who will say Twin Creeks was a development uh, that, well, look what happened to Twin Creeks, and you should you should have learned on that and, and not move forward with this. Well, that was a completely different scenario where the developer started this this area, for those of you who may not know. Uh, you know, and the housing market crashed right then and there, and the guy committed suicide without having the legal uh, legal ends of the, of the development, you know, tied up to where things could move along a lot smoother than what they did. Um, you know, but until we get all the bits of information uh, as far as these uh, traffic studies and things of that nature, you know, I'm not going to say I'm for it or against it. I like the idea of growth, but at what cost? Do, we, do, do I want it in, in lots that are really cram-packed? No. But I also don't think that, you know, lots you know, with one house for one acre uh, is what the city is, is looking for at this time. Um, but, you know, that's just my two cents and going off of, you know, what I've discussed with citizens and, and what the trend is in our area. So, um, I mean, that's really where I'm at. I, I, I don't have an answer of which way I would go, yes or no, on this particular development. I, I think it's a very interesting idea. But is it what is right for us? I don't know until we have that official meeting on Tuesday, until we get some more information back as far as traffic studies and things of that nature. So, I mean, that's in a nutshell where I stand. So, can I ask a question where you're doing those traffic studies? Because I think a lot of those people will go down New Carlisle Road to the west and also Scarf Road to the south out to 571. And so that would impact our township. So you might do your traffic study in New Carlisle and say, oh, it's 200 extra cars per hour or whatever it is. But you didn't look at all the routes that they could take. And so I'm just asking, is it looking at all the routes they can take or is it truly just focused on New, on New Carlisle Road or your Lake Avenue? Yeah, I, I know they're being done definitely up on the main roads, but you would probably be able to answer that better than me. Yeah, so we, we have hired Choice One Engineering to do that citywide traffic study. So we are looking at the primarily impact on 235 and 571, which is my big area of concern. When we brought up the development off of the one we're here discussing today, they didn't seem to have, have much of an impact in the general area. So um, I'm not saying we can't go back and have them take a look at that, but right now it is um, it, its impact is going to focus on uh, we have potentially four residential developments coming in. This is one of one of those four um, that have much more of an impact on 235 and 571. So uh, once we get that back, we'll have to look at that and see if we need to add to it to accommodate some other things. Okay, because 295 homes, if they're not going to have an impact on 235 and 571, to me would say they're going to all go down Scarf Road and New Carlisle Road to the west. I mean... to be contentious. I'm just trying to think logical. Sure. And, um, That's what the traffic traffic engineers had told us. Okay. So, so that is coming from a professional. Uh, yeah. So definitely. And I would like to just make yeah. one quick comment that this is meant to be a workshop between the two boards to work out some things. There is a section for public comment at the end. So if you could please hold your comments to the end so they can work out these issues, we would appreciate it. Thank you. 
my only concern is, I think I'll speak for all the trustees on this, is that if we, if we need to participate in that traffic study, sure. I don't, I'd like our concerns to be heard. I don't necessarily want to pay for it because I feel like you're getting the benefit of these homes in your community. If, if it truly comes to pass, if it all goes through, and we are not, except for that they will be on our roads in excess of, I understand how roads work, we all drive on everybody else's, but at least you need to look at the impact down Scarf and down New Carlisle Road, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Can, can I just add to that real quick? Also, if you are going to do that, can you look at it for school hours as well? Because a lot of parents drive their kids to school these days, so that would definitely affect Scarf, New Carlisle Road, Dayton Brandt, 201, everything that leads to the school. There's only a few roads. So you guys want to know information how it's going to impact your township roads, but you're not willing to pay for anything on the study? I'm willing to, we're all willing I just, I'm to, having a we're hard all time willing hearing, so I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. I, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing with the echo, so I just want to make oh, sure yeah. I heard both it's, of you correctly. You want me to speak with it or without it? I, I, what? I think we definitely it, it, talk about pain contributing to that, but you are reaping the entire financial benefit of this community. So I'm not sure why we should pay for that study. And I truthfully, as a mechanical engineer, and I've worked with a lot of civil engineers, it, it's not that big a deal to look at the rest of it. I mean, they're supposed to look at the entire impact of the neighborhood. That's a thorough traffic study. You know that. I mean, that's what you do. So. I, I understand. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. I, I agree with you that we should actually pay for that. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, not that we're putting our feet in the ground and saying absolutely positively no way. We want to know what the impact is. And sure. Because I think it will be um, substantial. Thank you. Did you have comments? Like Mayor, I find the the proposal interesting. Uh, I do want to learn more about it. I want to see a traffic study. I want to see an environmental study. Um, our responsibility as a council is to our constituents, this, the residents of the city. Um, we are responsible for the well-being of the city and the growth of the city. Um, the way I look at it, if somebody wants to become a part of the city, it would take an awful lot for me to say no. And that would, like I said, hinge on a traffic study and an environmental study. Yes, we are concerned about uh, the impact on Silver Lake. Um, I would like to see studies on, on that. But everybody's talking, complaining, well, it's going to be 200 and some odd houses. And there's going to be all these people driving on our back roads. These houses are not going to spring up overnight. It's going to take years to build that many houses, to, to build and sell that many houses. Everybody is not going to be, all of a sudden, everybody at once driving down Scarf Road or down New Carlisle Pike. It's going to be spread out over, over the day. Um, the traffic study will, will show what our city streets will do, but I don't think we would have any responsibility to study Bethel Township roads, would we? I, we can discuss that at a later point with council as a whole, maybe in a regular session. Okay. All right. I got a, I got a couple of things that I'd like to discuss. Um, we have our trustee meetings uh, twice a month for in the evening, regular meeting, and then we have two workshops on Tuesday mornings. And our residents have come back from the New Carlisle City meetings, and a couple of those things that have come up is one, that there is an agreement with the township trustees. And I haven't missed a meeting that I know of, and I haven't agreed, and I don't think Beth has or Julie. I'm just wondering if somebody can elaborate on who they have an agreement with in Bethel Township, because none of us elected officials seem to know about it. Agreement of what? 
uh, that we were okay with annexation and that there was an that's, agreement. But that's not what was said. There was. He said it. No, he no, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. You want me to play it back? He did not say there was. He did not say there was an agree. He, he did not say that there was. A, they were on board. Let Let's be a little can bit. I, can I Can I explain it? Because I'm the one who said it. We had a phone call with your administrator and your attorney that you hired, and he had indicated, she had indicated, they had indicated uh, that you guys were willing to move forward and discuss the annexation agreement. Um, so that's why it was said the way it was said. Now, Bethel Township had then posted on Facebook that you didn't need an annexation agreement for the type that we're doing. Well, I said that you guys were on board because one of the two things I was told we're here for today was to, to establish a boundary line, but more importantly, to remove the township from the um, to, to move the rose residents from the township to fully have a new Carlisle, and in order to do that, you do need an annexation agreement. Should they do a type to expedite it, so that's why it was said. So really, the Facebook post that you guys put out was not accurate. But I had said you guys are willing to talk to us based off the information that we had to get out. Because if you do want those residents removed, you actually do need that annexation agreement. So I think it just got confused with how Hang it was on. said. I did that Facebook post, and I. Listened Listen to your clip multiple times to be sure, and I know that you then called our administrator afterwards to say that's not exactly what you said. He listened to the Facebook post as well. If you had wanted us to make a correction, I would have been happy to, but you did clearly say we have an annexation agreement with Bethel Township. And I, we don't need to waste Hash this meeting sure. hashing this out, mm -hmm. but I listened to that multiple times. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth ever, and I'm sure you feel the same way. And we, I'm sure, GCP, we want to be, as I'm sure your board wants to be, as transparent as possible. And as straightforward as possible, but it clearly stated that we had reached an annexation agreement. Now, I totally agree. It could have been you meant just with Andy, which would have been fine. But that wasn't the that wasn't stated in the meeting. So I don't think we need to spend our hatching that out. We'd love with you, um, but have not reached an agreement. I think that's the distinction. And we know, and I think all the residents here are now aware, thanks to the thing that um, uh, Jennifer's company put together, that without, oh my battery's dying, <laughs> without an agreement, we cannot Let me try this again. So yes, we are definitely interested in talking with you guys about an agreement, but we haven't reached one yet. I think you know that, we know that, and we'll, we want to make sure that the general public knows that as well. Okay, we good? One of my other questions that I've heard from residents back and forth, and I can't remember your name, but the vice mayor there, you said about the uh, environmental impact, and we had residents, residents coming back and they were discussing a, um, a type one environmental impact study. And for my company, I've bought a few pieces of property, so I always do a phase one environmental study, but that has nothing to do with the environment for building houses or anything like that. It's to protect the buyer from hidden things that he's not buying a piece of property with a, a hazmat site on it or 500 uh, uh, 50 gallon drums or underground fuel tanks, things like that. So a phase one environmental study has zero to do with the impact on what this development would do. So are you saying tonight that that you as a council are gonna get someone to do an environmental study? Hello? 
No. That's being done by the developer, from what I understand. Why would the developer do that? There, it makes no sense for the developer to do it. The developer is not going to go out and look for a reason not to develop the property. It's up to the city if you want to establish a baseline and know whether or not in five years Silver Lake or anybody sues the city for environmental damage. The city would have to pay for that environmental study to, us, to get a baseline. The developer would do a, a phase one to ensure his liability and his baseline on buying the piece of property. There is no way whatsoever that a developer would, would go out and seek a study on what he's doing. That's not why it works. So you're saying a developer would never go out and do a study for Silver Lake or any of the surrounding area? He would never do it. I don't believe that he will that, that's not to what you protect said. You, you said he New wouldn't, Carlisle. You said he wouldn't do it. I did. So let me let me get it. He may do it, but it will do nothing to protect the city of New Carlisle. Okay. That's what I meant by he won't do it. He won't do a study to protect your interests. So are you saying, uh, Mr. Black, that the city should do a environmental study to protect Silver Lake or the wildlife, whatever's there? I, I know there's quite a bit of wildlife out there from my understanding. Uh, a couple of eagles and some deer and rabbits and, I don't know, geese or goose, whatever they call them. So is that what you're suggesting? If the city does an environmental study on the animals? Uh, I don't know the terminology for that for that type of study and that's fine i was just going off of what your vice mayor talked about i didn't really have that as a subject to talk about but when he mentioned the environment it jogged my memory on what our residents is coming back and they're talking about a phase one environmental study if i was on city council the same as right here if i was on bethel township and we were going to do something yes i would want an environment environmental study so that I felt good about it that it that I was not going to create a liability for the future New Carlisle yes I would now I would not Silver Lake yes that's a big thing but I don't know who's going to sue you you know what I mean it may be somebody else I would want an environmental study if I was sitting in a city council member's chair. That, I believe that would be something that council would discuss in our session with our attorney and the city, our city manager. Uh, I would say the ones that is on council that were not that were pretty smart. Uh, we take some advice from from uh, our city manager and our city attorney. Most of us, I believe, at least I do, does my own research also to see if it jives with what I'm told. The, I don't know what type of envir environmental study it would require. Uh, again, that would be a discussion in our council meeting, in a regular meeting, or a special meeting that we'd have. Yes. Well, I thought it died. Uh, with that said, I think uh, we've exhausted the environmental studies and we need to move on, sir. Thank you. I'm fine with moving on. Has there, has there been a study on your part as to whether or not your uh, water and sewer division can handle this development? To our knowledge, our water and sewer systems can handle that and a lot more. Oh, good. Okay. We okay. Got, we're going to wait in, in a little bit. We're going to have public comment. Hold that question because I definitely want to answer it. Go ahead. 
just wanted to go back to the traffic for a second. Um, I don't want you to necessarily pay for a study of doing, looking at the roads in our township, but um, again, back to, I would think you guys would want to know for the residents moving in there, they're also going to be affected when they use those roads. I mean, we don't have nearly that many houses up on that end of the township. So this is the 300. I mean, we probably have maybe 100 houses up that way, you know, if we're lucky now. So you're talking about adding another 600 cars at, you know, probably rush hour, school times, work times. So I would think you'd want to know how it's going to impact those residents as well, because they're going to be your citizens. In. So I just wanted to add that, that it's not just looking at how it's going to impact the township, but it's also, it's going to affect them. So. I may, if, we, if, if, I, if I may, respective elected officials, um, I would summarize this conversation on the traffic this way. First of all, I'm not a traffic engineer, so I don't, I don't pretend to be one, I don't play one on TV, none of the above. So I guess my, I think your question, trustees, is who determined the scope of the traffic study and how was that determined and is there, is there an, an interest in expanding it out if it's not already taking into account some of these next level roads, is there a way for it, for it to? And you may not have those answers tonight, but I, I think I can summarize. Is that the question? What's the scope of the study? What's it taking into account? Is it taking into account all of the roads that we might need to consider? So I don't think anyone has an answer to that question here tonight, but I, that's what I was hearing. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anyone on the uh, council side have anything else? We're looking at, was it 290 homes as a worst case scenario? Um, in Twin Creeks, there are a number of uh, property owners that have bought more than one lot just so they can have a bigger lot. I anticipate uh, if this goes through and if the property uh, lots of the size that, that they're specified, I'm sure there will be people buying more than one lot. Um, and like I said before, everybody's not going to be driving down the road at the same time. Um, there are a lot of variables that we can't anticipate. So I know this is still proposed, and I'm sure that it will go through evolutions in design changes, but what we have seen, I believe, is 294 homes um, on the big square and then the two legs. And if you look at those lot sizes, they are very small, even for... Um, for New Carlisle standards, if I look at your city um, zoning map, the section that was, I think it's, if you drive past the um, post office, kind of going north and then over to the west, a lot of those homes were built post-war, 19, late 1940s, early 50s, and those lots are actually slightly larger than these proposed lots. I mean, that's very, very small. And for Bethel Township, who is now used to carriage trails and park down in their lot sizes, those are actually substantially almost double the size of what this is proposed. It's, they're, they're small lots. And so um, I know you're not 100% sure, familiar with the expedited type two annexation. I'm sure the lawyers can fill you in way better than I can, but it's essentially the slam dunk of annexations. The commissioners, county commissioners can only reject it on seven criteria. If those seven criteria are met, they are, by law, compelled to pass it. We, um, they rejected the latest Huber Heights annexation petition for water and sewer. We don't have water and sewer in that section of the township. Um, we've talked with our provider is Clark County. They're obviously not going to provide through you to help us. So that is not a viable objection in this case. So I don't want to sound fatalistic. I hope that this annexation does not happen. 
but in the event that it does, we would really love to see less dense, substantially less dense, um, if that's at all a possibility. And I know you mentioned Twin Creeks, I think it's called. I did take a look at that development, and those lots are generous compared to what is proposed here. So I don't know if you've had any discussions with that that you're able to share. Um, I'd like to hear it. Just um, one qu uh, question, and I know that this isn't an, like an official answer you're going to give me, but just if, if you could, obviously, if, if it was you right now and you snapped your fingers, you wouldn't let this development happen at all. But let's say it was going to happen in some way, shape, or form, hypothetically, what size lots would you like to see? Just out of curiosity. I, and I know that's a loaded question because there's three of you and you all have different opinions. But I mean, I mean, what what would be your minimum? You know, how many feet between houses or how many per acre, just out of curiosity. Um, I'll let Don and Julie answer that while I look at my notes for what you guys have in your city. I want to make sure I'm citing correct statistics, but you guys can go ahead on that. Can I, can I ask a question before you, when you count that? I'm just curious to know. Um, I, I think it's, it's good effort that we're here discussing this tonight because I think the end goal is that both parties want to be happy. Um, so part of this process is having an annexation agreement in place. Um, if we come to some terms that we're both agreeable upon, and when that annexation comes to you guys as a vote, as a legislative body, and it has all the components that you want in it, are you, are you going to pass it or are you going to fail it? So we don't, we don't vote. We don't vote on this. But well, no, don't you have to pass an annexation agreement? That's what I'm saying. Oh, an annexation yes. agreement. Um, yeah, I'm saying if all components of that have been met that you guys are satisfied with, would you, as a legislative body, pass that annexation agreement? I, I speak for me. I think I would because I, okay. I, I think so. Yes. Th thank you. Thank you. What was the chart? Well, I think we'd say, I guess I'll answer for you and say, I think you wouldn't be here if you weren't interested in discussing sure. an annexation. And that's, that's the point of what I'm getting at. If they're not going to do it, then oh. what's the we're not doing Yes, then we're not. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, our goal is not to drag this out and then okay. dig our heels in. Okay. We, because we, the township doesn't vote on this. The residents don't vote on annexation. And in this type of annexation, expedited type two, the township doesn't vote. It's strictly the county and the municipality. I mean, you guys know this better than I do. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say it's a county, it's a property owner and a county driven process. Property owner says, I want it. This is what I want. County says, do you meet all the requirements? What kind are you looking for? Do you, can I check the boxes? Depending on what type, um, those boxes are different. Um, if it's an expedited type two, I mean, the city has to acknowledge there has to be a statement that the city is going to provide the various city services. Yep. So, I mean, the city has a hand in it, but it's really, I mean, the, the crux of a decision is at the county level. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's all. I'd like to comment on uh, Mrs. Harden, uh, Van Harden's uh, lot size. Personally, I'd like to see a half acre lots in this development. That would not make the uh, developer happy, uh, according to the maps that we're looking at. The uh, but once the lands annex, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge, uh, once the land is annexed, they have to go through our zoning. Our zoning will either approve it or not approve their lot sizes. Uh, I really don't want to see those type of homes as close as what is in Northwoods that you mentioned earlier in, is that back that behind. Called? That it's okay. called Northwoods, yes, ma'am. Uh, I would like to see bigger lots. Uh, like I said, a half, at least a half acre. I don't think any more than a half acre, depending on how the house is situated and, and the dimensions of the lot, the way they do, uh, the, the, the uh, width and depth of it. The, I think that would be better for us. And I think you guys, man, I could, I'm not even gonna say that. I'm not gonna speak for you guys. So if you think that would be a good idea, you can tell us. But, and, and if I am correct, Mr. Bridge, it does go through our zoning and stuff. Once it's annexed in, we have to approve lot sizes for the, or zoning does and, and whatnot, correct? Your planning board will get to preliminaries and work through some things with them. Um, you guys will have your shot at it as well. Yes. Exactly. Okay, I used the wrong board. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Can I just ask you a question about your half acre proposal? Is that on the part that you can actually build on or half acre on the 115, which would make the actual housing lots smaller? Are you talking about a half acre? I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a half acre. I had uh, two properties here just down the street at uh, 40 and 5th Street. Both of those were well, ones just under a half. The the it's a White House now. It was blue. That is a half acre lot. I think that would be substantial. And there, I would like to see them a little wider than what that was or is, so you're not stacked on top of one another. Basically, I would not want to look out my bedroom window and look in somebody else's bedroom, and I wouldn't want to have to keep curtains closed all the time it, for whatever, you know. Uh, some people like to have their windows open, they don't like curtains, or put whatever they want to put up, you know. I think a little distance is better for people in general, at least in, for me it is. Uh, where I live, sometimes I think those houses are too close. But I, I can't, uh, you know, I, I looked at tearing it down and buying the house next door, tearing it down and building one in the middle. But I think the city manager would have a problem with that. So in my mind, this is the stuff that has to be worked out beforehand to see if we can come to some type of annexation agreement is somebody's looking at these plans because for some reason the developer put that picture together and has some feeling that maybe that will get approved or whatever. So we need, or you need, to put that together and give us a plan as to what's going to be there so that we have some place to work on. You know, half acre does not sound bad. I don't know that you're going to get that done. Julie's question was a good question because the back of that property, have you ever walked that property and looked at it? No, I don't walk that level property. I know I know Peggy has. We could get you a gator or something out there and take you around. The back side of that property has got some uh, definite challenging uh, terrain. Uh, I'm not an expert on that property but Mary Ann has uh, looked at it, and yes, I have walked it uh, and looked at it. So we kind of want to know, you know, how much of the 115 acres will actually be developed. I think a, a big spot, too, and we've heard rumors, but I don't, I'll wait on you. We really have we really have no idea, but on our uh, calculations and stuff, it'll probably only be 77 acres because that back part is my understanding, and again, I have not been on it, is kind of like a wetland, some of it. Uh, from the map I'm looking at or the proposed whatever this thing's supposed to be. Uh, they have some, uh, looks like a couple of ponds back there and some green spaces and stuff. Uh, so I cannot honestly answer the, how many acres will be developed. Again, that would be, have to go through our planning board along with council. Do you, do you have a minimum um, open space requirement in your zoning code? Excuse me, ma'am? Do you have a minimum open space requirement in your zoning code, like 30%, 20%? We, we have, you, yeah, we have open do? space dedication. It's based off a formula. Oh, okay. I don't know what that formula is. Okay. I'll talk about it. So we've also heard rumors, but I don't know that they're right, wrong, or indifferent. The two legs, it's on the south side of Scarf, or on New Carlisle Road, especially the one to the west. That's a pretty wet piece of property and all. We've heard that maybe you're not, maybe the developer is not going to develop that. You know, I guess we'd like to know some of those things. Well, I, yeah, we would like to know that too. Uh, quite honestly, I have heard rumors that that particular area or that particular piece of land is not going to be developed. But once he, once he's annexed in and he owns the land, 
he pretty much do what he wants as long as it falls inside of our planning board and our zoning and whatnot. If I'm not, if I'm correct, am I correct, Mr. Bridge, on what I'm saying here? Yeah, from what I can hear, yes. Okay. So, but, so once he buys the land, he can do pretty much what he wants. We have, I have heard rumors, and that's all it is, strictly rumors. He is looking to sell that land, that that one parcel there, that west, uh, west, and uh, let's see, be south corner of it, because if, I don't know why. I don't know if he'll sell it. I don't know what he'll do with it. But we would have no control over that because he owns all of that land. I, th I think that's where you're, um, I don't know how to say this as gentle as I can, but that's, um, you're not thinking of this all the way through or something. I don't mean to be insulting, but you're 100% in the driver's seat. The two people that can stop this annexation is the owner and the city of New Carlisle, and you people will be voting on this annexation. So if it don't meet your guideline, you will simply vote no. They will go around, the clerk will call each of your names, and you will say yes or no. I would want to know that. I would not want to annex a piece of property and then say, well, he owns it. He can do whatever he wants with it. Well, I'll clarify that if, they won't have thumbs up, thumbs down on the annexation. I mean, they can work out an agreement, right? So how this usually happens is a developer says, a property owner says, I want to annex. City, what do you like? What can I what can I get for it? And I'm not saying here. I'm saying across the whole state of Ohio. That's how this works, right? That's how it works. There's incentives. There's reasons folks want to go from an unincorporated area to an incorporated area. It could be water and sewer. They can't get water and sewer where they're at. That's just the nature. That's just the way of the game, right? That's how the statutes got written. Um, and what and when that goes through, I mean, a city can. I mean, I suppose if the city said straight off. We're not interested. Go away. But I've never known. I mean, I, that would be that would be very strange in my in my experience. Um, but ultimately, the, the buck stops with the county, right? The county makes the decision. Now, as far as zoning, hang on, man. sure. Who's ever who's in charge of the audio? Can you get that noise out of it? The humming. It's kind of deafening up here. Fan. Fan. I hear and it's the mic, no, it's maybe, no, maybe it's just going through. There it is, it's gone. Okay. I don't hear anything. So were you saying that the city will have the opportunity to thumbs up or thumbs down its zoning? Because that's correct. But the city, I mean the county votes on the annexation itself. And we, we will. Uh, so that's going to be classified as an RPUD, which is a residential plan unit development. So we don't have any lot sizes set out in our code for that. That's usually established by the developer and what they want to present to the appropriate boards. There will also be a, a series of covenants established that's going to govern that particular thing. So it's not like it's coming in as an R5 or R7 where we know it's got to be X amount of this, X amount of that to meet standards. It is really done by application only. And our planning board will approve or deny those things and make the recommendation council then they'll go on to approve or deny that but we were not sit, we don't we can't sit there and say um, well, I can't I can't not say it like that if they present a 50 by 120 lot we can go back and say we want a 60 or a 70 by 120 that's the grounds we can walk on but we don't have anything established already that says it has to be this look at Twin Creeks for example those lots are a little bit bigger I think about 75 by 130 don't quote me on the numbers but that was something that was established back then at that point in time with the developer and the board to play it so when that time comes, they'll sit down and talk to the planning board, and ultimately, council will have that final decision on those lot sizes. I was, I was just saying for us to reach an agreement, we need to know what their thinking is. So we have a couple options here. Um, one, I, I kind of hope we can start moving in the direction of looking at what we can do with the annexation agreement. I think how it's progressing at this point in time is pure speculation. We don't know until they actually go through the planning board what they're going to submit. I, too, have heard rumors that the two legs are going to go away. I haven't seen anything until they submit it to the planning board. Um, but I think for order for progress in time, I think we should really start focusing on the components of what an annexation agreement needs to be. We will not be able to answer any density questions for you tonight. 
So let me ask you just a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If the two legs is going away and the developer is not going to develop those into houses, then let's take them out of the annexation proposal. That is, That would be for the developer. The city does not own that land. That would be his decision to do so. We can always ask him to take it out, but we can't force him to remove it. I, I understand, but if they get the feeling they're going to get a no vote, you'd be surprised at what you can control. I think one of the things that might come up with the differences is we're dealing with two different annexations with the city of New Carlisle and the city of Uber Heights. And I think it, it was a probably a misconception on all of our parts, including myself. Uh, the city of Huber Heights's charter says they have to accept the annexation by vote. It might be that New Carlisle's charter does not mean they have to, because the city of, New, of Huber Heights has to accept that annexation by a vote at the end. New Carlisle's may not. So uh, it, that could be the difference, because as a charter city, they can make those rules. So that could be where, where we've been confused on whether or not they voted in. Because we know that the, the Uber Heights. Can they answer that question? Huh? Can they answer that question? Well, is a question I, I didn't So, maybe City of Uber Heights' charter says they have to accept the annexation at the end by vote. So does your charter at the end say you have to accept the annexation by vote? I don't know if it says it in the charter, but it's definitely in our codified ordinances that council would have to accept uh, the actual annexation and maybe some roads and stuff like that. So there will be a person, a point where they'll have to vote on to accept that stuff. So there, there is an opportunity then to say no to the annexation. Well, yeah, I've, I've already established that. I've said multiple times it goes through the planning board, then council will have the final say. I'm not talking about planning or zoning. I'm talking about the annexation. There's a part in your report, and however, that says you have to accept the annexation. Yeah, but we have to go through the, the, the processes first, and that's they go through the planning board, they submit the stuff to the planning board, and council wants to derail it at that point in time. After it goes through that process, then they can. But it has to be able to go through the processes first. And that is preliminary plat to the planning board. Planning board makes so recommendations I'm not exactly to the council. I'm not exactly sure how you can zone a piece of property that's not in your jurisdiction yet. Because it says in our code that we we will we will and we will take that in as a similarly zoned area. So I think you guys have an A1 or A2 on that now. We don't have that variation of agriculture. We just have a simple agriculture. Right. So we'll keep it agriculture for up I think it's up to 30 days, and then the planning board will make a recommendation to council of what the zoning it is. Totally understand. And that's going to be more for this particular case in our bud. So there's not a vote that happens. Prior to that, from your council that accepts that annexation? No, it goes with the planning board first. Okay. okay. You were expressing concern about lot sizes. Um, I spoke with the developers after a planning board meeting a while back, and they said they have done a number of developments just like this one, same lot sizes, and they sell like crazy. The people, the, the developers are doing this so they get the opportunity to sell lots and turn a profit. Now you said they're not going to submit an environmental report that is detrimental to their process. Similarly, they're not going to have lot sizes that people aren't going to buy. If people don't want a lot that size, they won't buy it. They'll look elsewhere or they'll buy two lots. Um, like I said, they, they said they've done a lot of developments with similar lot sizes and people buy them because there are a lot of people that don't want to mess with cutting a large lawn, uh, shoveling a lot of snow. They like small lots. So that, that is kind of a moot point anymore. I just had a question. Is there any, what's being, what's that, that property used for right now? Other than what's it being used for? Farming. Is there any special interest in it by any particular individual? What now? Is there any particular special interest from a single individual that has anything to do with that property? What I'm saying is, is there anybody fighting to keep it the way it is because they have a direct involvement that benefits them with that property? I was, I mean, I was referring to them, but. Oh, 
Oh, okay. All right. I mean, I didn't know if, if you guys had any like particular use going forward with it. Is what I was getting at. Uh, no, with as the township, like in, no. Okay. All right. No. Thank you. Other than quality. Other than big quality of life, right? We start getting more traffic and more kids to the school and everything else. So everybody's affected. I'm. I don't quite get the question. I don't think. And I think that um, your superintendent at Tecumseh has said that they do not wish to have these children, so they will go to Bethel Township. The schools won't reach an agreement to redistrict the, the lines. And just to go back, Mr. Grimm, to your point, um, I did pull up these numbers. Your Northwoods development, which is the ones that were built in like the 1950s, um, that's north and west of the post office. Um, the lot size there is almost across the board, 864 feet. And these lot sizes that they were proposing are like 860 feet. I mean, they're even smaller. And those, I'm sure you've all, I used to live on Scarf Road, I used to run in those neighborhoods all the time. Those are some small lots. and. I'm sure people are buying them, but you also, as a city, want to look at what type, how you want your city to look in 10, 20, 30 years. And if it is small lot sizes that mirror Northwoods, well, then that's your call. But my guess is, I would hope that they would be bigger, at least Twin Creek size, which are, hang on, I got those numbers too. Um, Twin, Twin Creeks are uh, about 2,500 to 2,000 is the smallest to 2,800 square feet. So, you know, almost triple in size from the North Woods. Um, but within a city, just like any business or, or parks or whatever it may be, okay, yeah, you want sorry, a variety. Yeah. You don't want just one size house. Um, Mr. Cook, how many feet are between you and your neighbor? 10 or 12 feet? Yeah. How many feet are between your house and neighbor to your 12 feet? Okay. And there's 18 between mine. You've got 16. So I think, you know, any city that's growing that's our size needs to have options. You don't want just one size house that's like Twin Creeks or houses that are really tight together like the ones that are being proposed. You want a little bit of everything because not everybody's the same. I don't want a big house with an acre lot. I don't want to take care of it. My house is small and it's got a nice little yard. It does, it does just fine for me. And then there's some people that want to even less. They want that, that yard that takes them 10 minutes to, to clean up after they've been at work all day for eight hours. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that that's what I want out there, but I'm just saying variety is something that you should have when you grow a city. You don't want one type of house. But, and I totally agree. And I'm not trying to tell you how to rezone this or anything, but we have in our zoning code what's called a transition zone for areas that are next to municipalities that we would allow denser development next to the municipality. And then as it moves towards the township, it gets less dense. And um, just like you don't have to pay for that traffic study that impacts us, but maybe in light of being a good neighbor, part of that could be that they're denser towards Scarf Road and New Carlisle and then less dense. And again, it's the ultimate decision is up to you if the annexation goes through, we realize that. But we are all next to each other for as long as we're here. And so we would like it to at least flow and look a little bit less dense as it gets closer to Bethel Township. And I realize that's the developer has a lot of pull in that, but as Don mentioned, you guys also have more pull than I think you realize. And we obviously, a half acre would be small to Bethel Township, but man, if those were half acre lots, I think we'd all be like, whoa, only 140 houses versus 300 houses? I mean, that's still something. And the other thing that um, we have said in our meetings with Huber Heights is that one of the reasons people are building in Bethel Township is because of Bethel Local Schools. We are not the school board, we're not speaking for them. But if this number of kids overloads our school district, then the draw of Bethel Local Schools ceases to be a draw. And you won't sell those homes as fast as you wanted to. And 
and it hurts all of our property values in Bethel Township. We like, and I'm sure you agree, great schools equal great community. You have Tecumseh is a great school. You don't want to make choices for your community that would damage your school. And in this case, you're making a choice for our community and by extension our school that we don't have a control over. So we would just respectfully ask that you keep that in mind because I know that you would do the same for Tecumseh. Thanks. I do have a question for the township trustees. The, from what I'm hearing, you guys would be on board, or at least you would, ma'am, with a half acre lot. I can't say we do, we're gonna do that. That's just my preference. I can't speak for all of council, and I can't speak for the planning board. But what else are you guys looking for to come to an agreement on the annexation agreement that we have to do? Because we, we keep going over lot sizes and we need, in my mind, we need to move to the next item on your agenda for what it would take in your eyes to get an agreement with this for this annexation. I could, I could give you a couple things, and I'm, I'm sorry on the lot size. On When Beth was giving you the numbers of 800, it's 8,000 yeah. square foot lots. A ha an acre is 43,560. So roughly 22,000 for a half acre. And those in the Northwoods are 8,000. The ones being pr proposed are 8,000. Let's come up with some number that makes sense, okay? Between those numbers, let's come up with something. The lot size is huge. The second thing is those two legs. If he's not going, you want me to wait? Okay. <laughs> You said lake or lake instead of lake. <laughs> you did say lakes. Oh, there lakes. are no lakes on the property. There's one little half acre pond. Right, on the uh, north side behind the development. Is that the one you're talking Correct. about? Correct. Okay. I'm not going to talk about any ponds. Okay. The two legs south of Scarf Road. New Carlisle Road, I'm sorry. Take those out of this annexation agreement. That is huge. The, that, those two things are the big items. Just get it down to where the farmer makes up more money than it's worth. You know, if he sells it as a farm, the way it's zoned, it's worth 10,000 an acre. He wants 15,100 or something. That's fine. Let him make his money. Let the developer make some money, but get it down. You know, I started this by saying, nobody gets everything that they want. Nobody's totally upset. That's what an agreement or negotiations is. We both walk out and we don't know if we won or lost, but it's better than when we walked in the room. The gentleman here speaks of what everybody wants. I can understand that. The farmer wants to sell it. The developer wants that. The buyer wants this, all of this and that. All of these people want something too. The school wants something too. Let's get something down that makes sense. The guy that owns, the family that owns Silver Lake, they want it to still be there in a few years. You know, let's come to an agreement. That's what an agreement or negotiation is. But we have to have some kind of answers. We can't just say, you know, well, let's get an agreement, but the agreement won't say nothing, and then we'll annex it, and then we'll let the planning board, you know, do it and all. We have to know what's going on with it. That's what it takes. So if I could ask a question, so I think I heard you correctly. Um, so you're discussing what you want to see in the annexation agreement. If I heard you correctly, that you would like density of the lots listed in the annexation agreement? What now? You want density of the lots in the annexation agreement? Yes. Okay. Council, with that being said, my recommendation is that we move on to public comment and we wait. We will not be able to have to discuss that until after it goes through planning board. 
So, and that's fine, sure. So that's one component of it. The other component of it is, do you, you, do, you do want your residents removed from, from the township? What do you guys want on that? I'm sorry? What do you want on that? This is, I mean, we've been talking, and it's funny because I had just written this down before he said this. You guys haven't really said what you want in the, annex and the annexation agreement. So what are, what are you interested in getting out of it? Because I haven't heard anything being asked for or given up either side. Well, we would be more interested in hearing what you want to hear because at the end of the day, we really don't need the annexation agreement to move forward with this. So us being here is a good show that we're willing to listen to you and then take it back and work within our board. Um, individually, these council members, they'll, they'll all have their own opinion, but it really matters what it means at a collective whole. And it's just for the sake of time and, and being, being, being good stewards of coming here. But we really would like to hear what you guys want so we can take it back and work with our board. So we know we want a boundary extension. And no annexation in the future for a period of sure. time, like maybe a thousand years. But if we could do that, <laughs> we'd settle on 950 or something. If a homeowner... Well, thank you. That was funny. So here's my concern as an administrator, and I, I shared this with council, and I think you guys, would, everyone in this room will be, understand where I'm coming from with this. I don't think, and I'm speaking on my behalf, I have no, rec I have no qualms recommending into the council that we establish a boundary we don't go past it what i don't want to do is hold back our utility so if one of your residents wants our water and sewer down the road they can have it right now our code states that we go after you and we we have to annex you in but i don't want to hold back the city utility can you can you say that again please because i could only understand it's, it's like tough. every fifth sure word. We, I don't want to hold back the city utility, and by that I mean our water and sewer. So I don't have a problem recommending the council that we establish a boundary line and we don't go in past that boundary line. However, I don't want to hold back the city's water and sewer. So let's just say that we come to that boundary line and the guy next to that says, wait a minute, I want water and sewer. We should be able to service that without having to annex them into the city. So I think if we can establish that, I know council would probably be willing to at least discuss it. That'll be their final, final say. But at the end of the day, I do not want to hold back our utility. Yeah, I was going to, uh, I'll touch on what uh, you was asking, Ms. Reese. I, as far as what I want out of this, I, I know what I want, and I'm not going to get into it just because I want to officially get it from them on Tuesday night at the meeting. I mean, yes, I think we all know what they are presenting or are going to present, but until then, I, I'm not going to give out what I would like to see them change or do or, or, the, or the pros or the cons. I, I, I would really just like to let them do their presentation, hand it to our board officially and legally, and then then we can start with our counter. I just I think it would be premature to do that and unprofessional in my opinion. I don't I mean I know that they know a lot what, a lot what these folks want and they've probably heard chit chat of what some of the other council members want. I just I don't want to put it out there until it's officially done on Tuesday. What's Tuesday? Planning board. The planning, planning board, board meeting. If I may repeat something that the mayor said off the bat, we've not been presented with anything. What we're walking officially, what we're working on is just what we're hearing from the community, from you guys, from other people, and the little bit that we heard at a planning meeting. And you said something, Ms. Van Heron, that really uh, got under my skin. No future annexations. It is not our place to limit future city councils. If somebody wants to, 10 years down the pike, wants to be annexed into the city, I am not going to say, no, you can't do it today. So I can't speak for the rest of the council, but for me, that would not fly. Okay. One question I would have for Ms. Van Heron. Do you have that same agreement with Huber Heights not to come and annex any more of your land? We're still working on our agreement with Huber Heights, and since their last annexation petition was, if you would <laughs> yeah we're still working um, their last annexation petition was denied by the county so we are in limbo land with the city of Huber Heights um, and I think there's something I, I don't know if it was in those um, I think it was in the notes but um, if a the border is not conformed those residents are essentially dual citizens, yes. so they pay a boatload of taxes. They will pay our property taxes, not our fire and EMS, 
um, they'll pay the school taxes, of course, but then they'll pay your city taxes too. And I do think as elected officials, we're always looking for ways to minimize the tax burden on our residents. And you would hate to have 200 unhappy new homeowners that said, what the heck, we're paying both of these taxes? So it, it's just something to consider in the agreement. My understanding is if we annex them into the city, they would pay their property taxes to Miami County, and they would pay their city income tax to the city. And if I am wrong on that, then somebody gave me wrong information. No, the, township, the township does not have an income tax, and the county doesn't have an income tax. So they would pay your city income tax, they would pay Bethel Local Schools tax, taxes, property taxes, and Bethel Local Schools earned income tax, and then they would pay Bethel Township's property tax. We only have one levy that levy that, that would be included on, and that would be a 3.8 mil general uh, fund levy. All the taxes that they would pay would go to Bethel Township with the exception of our city income tax, and that would come to the city. You Is that correct? property taxes in your city? No, well, no we, we have property tax, but and I'm, I'm, I'm no expert in this. I'm assuming they would just pay the millage on the fire and EMS, that they would pay general property tax to Miami County, but since they received the services for fire and EMS, they would pay that. And I could be wrong. They, they more or less pay all of the taxes, right? It's like they're, it's like they're double, I mean, yes. calling a double citizen is a little cleaner now. I won't pretend to try to parse the different safety services, who goes where, but my, the way I was, the way I understand it is there, is that they're d double, t double taxed. They are. Because yes. that's the deal that was, Strat I had up. I well, had a let me, let me just, let me ask, let me say this. Right now, New Carlisle residents, we are part of Bethel Township, we're also part of New Carlisle. And to those of you who live in New Carlisle, do you, well, it's, I guess it's the same county, so you don't pay any Bethel Township fire and levy taxes, do you? We do not. All we pay is the city of Van De or city of uh, New Carlisle police uh, levy, and we pay the fire levy that that all citizens would have to pay, and the citizens that would live in Bethel uh, Township, New Carlisle, or, or it would actually be uh, New Carlisle, Bethel Township, Miami County. The only thing they would pay to us would be their income tax, the police levy, which is part of the income tax, and our fire and EMS levies. All the other taxes would go to Miami County, and they would not be paying any of uh, Clark County taxes because the land is not in Clark County. It is in Miami County, and you cannot change county lines. No, even with an act of God, I don't believe that can happen. And, and you don't have a property, another property tax besides your fire and EMS levies in the city of New Carlisle. Is that what I'm hearing you say? We have street levies. I mean, we have various levies that they would have to pay, right. but that would only because would be because they are residents of the city of New Carlisle. If and when that is annexed, all the other taxes, the school taxes, the property taxes, whatever other taxes my, uh, Miami County has, would go to the county. Right. and through them would come to Bethel Township. I do have one, one question from, I'm just going to say for all of you. I've, I've heard tonight that you guys are wanting answers that we can't give you. And, and in my mind, I think you're wanting to know if we are going to vote for or against this, this annexation. There is a city council member up here, a city manager, or our legal advisor, that will answer that question. We don't know. And as we have told your citizens, it's been coming to our meetings, and I'm sure I've said it repeatedly, it is not before us. So we don't know anything if until it comes before us. So we can't answer a lot of your questions because we don't have all the details yet, quite honestly. And we get that, and we are very appreciative that you came. We really are. And as your city manager pointed out, you don't have to make this agreement. So that is an extra huge thanks for all of us that you're willing to be here on a Friday night in the heat and the horrible acoustics. 
Um, and so I think we've got several points out. Um, we've got the density that we're concerned about. Obviously, the less dense, the better from our perspective. We've got the moratorium on future annexations with perhaps the um, exception to that. I understand, Mr. Grimm, you're not, you're opposed to that, and, and that's fine, but it's definitely something that we would like as a part of the request. The, and, and the detachment and confirmation of the boundaries. The, the, uh, as far as future annexations, if and when this does go through or not, because I don't know. I'm right. sure everybody up here don't know. And we know that. this is hypothetical because but, you don't have all the information. But it's like I think the mayor or vice mayor said, the city manager say, and I'll reiterate it. If somebody down the road two months later says, oh, they got city water, they got city sewer, I want that. We can give them that without annexing them, but if they ask us to annex them, I'd say it's a good bet we will do it because they're touching our land, and that's one of the prerequisites for annexations. It has to be to our borders. I'm not saying we would. They may not want us to annex us. They may just want our services, and I think we would be good with that, too because that still brings revenue into the city through water and, and uh, sewage. And then uh, I don't know who would put the pipes in to get there. They would probably have to do it. I, that's beyond my pay grade. Can I just ask one clarification question? So you do not have a new Carlisle city property tax on the house and no, the property? No, ma'am. We have, no. It, it's all ran through the county. It's all county okay. property taxes to the best of my knowledge. At least that's who I make my property taxes out to the treasurer of Clark County. We do get, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bridge, we do get a pittance. Mr. Bridge? A pittance from Clark County for, uh, from property taxes. Yes. Every town does. Every town does. It's enough for maybe a tank of gas. It's what? It's enough for maybe a tank of gas. Well, A small amount. It's a small amount. It's a small amount. But we have no city property tax. We have income tax, we have a police levy, we have street levies, and fire and EMS. Can you use, Mr. Block, can you use your speaker, please? What I was saying is we understand how the taxes work, and we were hoping that you understood that when you make your check out to Clark County, that part of that money is received back to your township or to your area. Okay, as the man said, it's a small amount. I understand that, but you can't. So his buildings. We just wanted to know that you understood you do get some of that money from paying your real estate taxes every six months. You're absolutely correct, we do. But I will tell you, I pay somewhere around two grand a year in property taxes, and more than half of it goes and comes to school. So we don't get a whole lot back. I, I don't even know what that figure is. But also, the property would remain in Miami County. So because it's Miami County property, Clark County would not get any property tax, to my knowledge. Is that correct? One of you two down there at the end? I don't think anybody's arguing yeah, that at all. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I think we've got on everybody's nerves sufficiently. A few people haven't said anything. Uh, we like for our residents to have a chance to speak. So I. Their residents have been here. What? And their residents have been here. Okay. And if there's any new Carlisle residents here as well. So I'd like to uh, get ready for public comments, but I would like to ask in the public comments that we, um, and I don't mean any disrespect here, but let's have a few l little tiny ground rules because we don't want to be here all night, even though I brought a change of clothes, but uh, we don't. 
so first of all let me just just figure this out is there anybody here that's for the annexation I'm piecing it together. I, no, no, I will in a minute I'd like to do this okay there is nobody here that's going to speak for annexation correct so we've established that so we know you're against it so you don't have to take part of your time to tell us you're against it we know you're against it because of bethel school the additional burden it's going to put on bethel school there's not one person here that wouldn't agree with that there's not one person here that wouldn't agree that traffic is going to be a major consideration. The gentleman there said all the houses are not going to be built at once, so we understand that as well. But eventually they'll all be built. I'm 65 years old. I really, truly, because I'm trying to eat, I look pretty decent and all. I think I'll be alive when they're all built. So I will see that someday. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is I want to open it up to public comments. I want to limit it, you know, to a little bit of time for each person and let each person that wants to speak. But there's about 25 of you here, so we don't need... Please don't take this wrong. But we don't need to hear 25 times how bad the traffic's going to be. We don't need to hear 25 times how uh, it's ruining the community or that there's going to be a ton of traffic. Is that agreeable? Okay. So. Before we move on, so I just want to go back and revisit the contents of the annexation agreement just due to the hard hearing. I did get it confirmed. Just want to make sure it's good so I can go back and work with council on this. We have established a boundary line, density, uh, no more annexations uh, for a certain amount of time, 1,000 years, uh, legs removed, and then uh, we should be able to advance our water and sewer. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five components of the annexation agreement at this point in time. Does that sound accurate? That sounds e extremely accurate to what I'm hearing. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to entertain to put in well, that agreement? Does the city want to entertain the conformity issue? Conform conformance? Conformity? Um, I think that we'll have to have that discussion later sure. on. And I'm assuming we'll probably hopefully have another one of these meetings to come back once we have a time to go and talk to our respected parties and hopefully reconvene at a maybe a later date. Okay, so you heard what he said. They're going to go back and they're going to talk about density. They're going to talk about um, whether they conform, meaning whether they're dual citizens, things like that. Uh, talking about the two legs, we think that's big. So, is there anybody? Yes. What? I'm going to let you speak about that because that's something that's not 100% established here, okay? So you feel free to talk about that. I know about where you live, and I totally understand it. So, is there anybody here from New Carlisle? So, we're getting this down, see? We're all against it, or you're all against it, or whatever. And there's nobody from New Carlisle. So, you have to come to the podium, you have to state your name, and then tell us what's on your mind, and we'll go from there. So, it looks like we have Mary Ann Layton coming up. Mary, how much time would you think is fair? Is, is five minutes more than sufficient? For me. All right. We're going to go with five minutes or we're going to try. I don't like to stop anybody from talking, but Mary let's Layton. try to be. Go, Mary. Excuse me. Mr. Black, Mr. Black, we would also like to uh, have their address. At, okay. Yeah. 8085 East New Carlisle Road. Hello. I was just going to say something about lot size and house sizes. Uh, 
um, what's the plat north of Lake Street? North. Okay, I've walked those streets. People are out. People are friendly. Kids are playing. But what I noticed, people still had their driveway up to their house, but they eliminated their garage to make their house more living space. So that was one thing. That's about all I got to say. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mary. Who would like to speak next? We have a taker. Uh oh. Good evening. Tom Keeper, 5833 Scarf Road, about at Heilman. Uh, a few things. One, on the density, uh, 290 homes was described as a worst case. Uh, I like that phrasing because that's far the, that's definitely a worst case scenario. And there seemed to be some sort of Somebody said the word agreement on how dense this is to be. That does not match up with what we're thinking about. That area now is zoned, if I am correct, at about five acres for, per home. It's agri well, it's agricultural, but you can do two with the frontage of 175 feet. Two, and there are some five acre yeah, areas. Right, yeah, you could get it all. At any rate, we're a long way from a quarter acre. So to say that going from a quarter acre to a half acre is a compromise, it is not a compromise. That's just making it from the worst case scenario to the slightly less than worst case scenario. So I don't want anybody thinking that, uh, and I believe the folks back here are probably in the same camp. Let's not start thinking that we can tweak this by a quarter acre and, and, and think that we're going to buy in on that because for myself, we're not. Regarding planning, it was mentioned that you would wait for the, um, for the builder, for the developer to submit a plan before choosing a density or making a plan for the area. That seems to be the opposite of what planning is. If you're looking at growth of New Carlisle, there should be an idea in mind of what kind of density, what kind of housing, how you want that area to develop. Even though, even if this area is a surprise, these particular lots, I would think that if you have a city plan, you're looking at, okay, which directions can we go and what kind of density, what kind of development do we want there? If you're not, I would suggest that that's something that should be thought about. Um, traffic study. I mentioned the traffic study only looked at traffic going into New Carlisle. Now, I've worked in this area before. If a traffic engineering company came to me and said, here's my traffic study of your site, and I only looked at this half, I'd say, go back and finish the job, because a traffic study needs to look at the full impact of a development, where traffic comes from each direction, what the density is, where are the destinations that they're going to. You can't just look at that lot and think that everybody's going to drive into New Carlisle, and that's the only place they're going to go. There are destinations towards Huber. You've got the Meyer store, which is the largest grocer in the area. That's that's close. They're not not everybody's going to go to the IGA for all their groceries. So where's that traffic going to go? Well, it's going to some is going to go on Scarf, and some is going to go on New Carlisle Road. If they're not counting that, I suggest they're not doing their full job, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, similar with environmental study, I don't know what the law requires, but certainly I would expect an independent environmental study that looks at the impact of this dense development on the area. Where does all the runoff go? What's the impact on Silver Lake? What's the impact on different creeks in the area? Uh, what are the impacts to various flora and fauna in the area, et cetera, et cetera. And traffic comes into environmental studies uh, to some degree, too. And finally, the schools. Uh, we've been through this already with encroachment from Huber Heights. Uh, 
you know, we get those additional children. That's a cost to the district. This is not a profit-making corporation. Our taxes have already gone up because of that encroachment from Huber Heights. The way it's described here, it'd be the same thing. We already have a, a school income tax. I would foresee if, if Bethel Schools is saddled with students from 290 houses, that that's going to jack that up too. And the school can't handle it right now, and not in the time frame that it would take to build this number of homes. That is all. Thank you. The lady back there was about to come up. I want to hear what she says. Well, I think I want to hear. Uh, yeah, I know. You may not. <laughs> um, this, you have this for tall people. Okay. Pull it down. Push it down. No, I can't even do this. So. No, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need it. I was a teacher at one point in time. I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm good. This is my yeah. No, I do good. All right, we'll go here. Uh, many of you have already seen my face. You've heard my voice because I have been fighting this since the end of February. Who are you? Yeah, my name is Tanya Wells. I live at 5330 Eastland Drive. I am a New Carlisle, Bethel Township resident, Miami County. Um, there's a lot of us here fighting. I'm not going to rehash what I am. What I do want to know is the actual process. My understanding is that the developer, they do the land, they do that. The only way to actually get it to you guys and your planning board to make decisions is to go to the county first. That developer submits to the county. That is correct, right? Yes. So when they are submitting to your planning board on Tuesday, if that's the case, that is their concept. There shouldn't be any actual voting, is that correct? No voting, correct? Okay. So that is their concept. So if we have Miami County, Miami County, that's where it starts. You guys are skipped because if it's a type two annexation, there is no start with you. You have absolutely no control. Then it goes to your planning board, where your planning board can say, you know what? going to go to council. Exactly. Which is established, so. I know, I know. My question is, why exactly are we here now? To discuss the annexation agreement. Agreement. So my understanding, when does that agreement take place? Are you wanting this agreement before it even goes to Miami County? Um, that would be in the best interest of your township trustees and because exactly if you don't, if you don't want, if you, if you got to have the annexation agreement with a type two if they want them removed. If you want, please say that again. If you want the township removed, we've had India, every indication that the developer plans to do a type two expedited. Okay. So if you look at the rules with that, in order to have your people removed from the township, you have to have an annexation agreement in place. So, so my assumption is, my, as, my assumption is, they would have to attach that to the petition so the Miami County Commissioners know that there's an annexation agreement um, in place. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the last time the Huber Heights one got failed was simply because there was no annexation agreement in place. Is that true? And that's what I read in the papers. That's why I'm asking because yeah, it's sometimes no, it was, not true. Um, it was, there's seven conditions and one of them is that you've clearly defined your boundary lines and they sure. have so gotcha. that was yeah. but, so, but my understanding is you, it can still go to the Miami County and you can still have an annexation agreement after the fact. Is that correct? So why are we doing it now? That's what I'm asking right now. What I am hearing is from you who is saying words like, we don't really need annexation to move forward. We don't. And I understand that, but why can't we still go and work together instead of a threatening, well, you don't even, no one has even put forth, well, we'll have to go back to our council. Well, we don't know. They're going to do an environmental study. Yet, have any of you even looked into who's going to do that? You mentioned the developer never will. Do you know if the developer will? The developer did do a phase one environmental study. We just learned what that was. Uh, just well, actually, it, it, I, I'm not, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it didn't sound like the proper order when you do a phase one, because we've had one before, you're right, it looks like contamination. But we did ask the developer if he's actually looked at the uh, environmental impact on um, Silver Lake. He did tell us yes. So when the time is so appropriate, when the time is appropriate, we will have them submit those documentations to our council so we can review them. Okay, so, but yet you want an agreement right now. But yet I you don't have the answer. Ma'am, I 
never said I needed an agreement right now. What I needed is the components of the agreement so I can go back and have discussion with council about the contents and how we want to move this, forward. This is what I need to hear then from my township because I'm hearing two different things. If I'm hearing no, yeah, I'm entertaining conversations, it's saying to the townships, it's saying to the county that you're on board with it. And we're not. And the county is here to help we're not on board with the annexation, but an expedited type two is these seven conditions. If, right. If all those seven conditions are met, right. then that annexation goes through. And without an agreement, we cannot conform those boundaries or detach that property from the township. And because there's a potential for 294 homes, that those people will pay Bethel Township taxes and they can also vote in our elections and they can vote against the best interests of the rest of the township. We don't have to reach an agreement. We would like, but we can't, that property can't be detached without an agreement. And with that agreement, we might be able to persuade the city of New Carlisle to do less dense development. I would love to see nothing happen there. We all would love to see nothing happen there. But sticking our heads in the sand and saying, I don't disagree with that. It's not a good strategy. And so, even though to the point of a half acre is not good enough, I, I totally agree. I'd love to have 10 acre homes there. But that is asking for, we'd like to ask what is reasonable. I, I don't want to say, as in my 10,000 years with no annexation was a joke. Nobody's going to give us a thousand year non-annexation agreement. Have so. I have a question on that. Based on the annexation laws and an agreement, is it even legal to put in that they can do that? Is that actually a legal thing that they can say, all right, this will not be annexed for any kind of thing? Yes, you can put in an annexation. I mean, that's what's in it for the township, right? Right, right. Parameters on annexation or not annexation, whether the, it's this township or any other township in the state. What's, what might be in it for the city, I can't speak for them, but right. what might be in it for the city is the conformance of the boundaries, right? Okay. Where it kicks the township out, puts the... And if I could speak for the trustees, the reason we're exploring this now is because it's it's real, it's live. There's a at least a proposed or, or potential annexation, so it's top of mind for anybody. If we don't do it now, we lose the opportunity, or it just or just doesn't work out, or however it is. But then this annexation that's being proposed goes through the way the process works. So that's why that's the time. And I and I understand that part, but sure. I think what I'm having a trouble with 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 all of you know, I have talked, I have emailed senators, representatives, I. Have our commissioners, I have our county commissioners, I have done the research like a lot of people here have. What I have a very hard time with and is that when it does get to the county and they have seen that there's been an agreement, they're really at a loss because they, they're under the, the assumption that, well, they must want it. And and so and they granted they really can't do anything other than it's gotta be the check boxes, and I understand that. But my also question is, is, I understand that if my township wants to have a meeting with all three of the commissioners, yes, it would have to be public. My first question is, why not? My second question is, you can still have a meeting and it not be all three, as I'm sure that they have found out, well, it's not, it does not prohibit the Sunshine Law, that you can have that meeting, why not? We talked to the county prosecutor because we had asked the, the county commissioners to have a meeting, an open meeting with the trustees, Andy, uh, Debbie, and all. And it is not legal, is what the county commissioner, the county prosecutor, is telling well, us. They might want to talk to their commissioner because they said open door. I mean, just something that well, I. But we well, just so you know, Tanya, the the answer to when we could meet came from two of their commissioners that said they could not do it. Okay. So they might tell you open door, but they told us we can't meet with you. So, yes, ma'am. And we're way past time on. I know, and I apologize. Okay. I needed to have. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Yes. 
Scarf Road, right across, or New Carlisle Road. I'll learn my roads here for CRC. Go uh, for it. Shelly Vickery, uh, 8780 East New Carlisle Road. Um, we're right across from the 115 acres. And um, the only thing I want to bring up is we've talked about environmental studies, but um, what you were bringing up was that it's not really the level that needs to be done. Um, and my concern is how it's going to impact the, the, that kind of a development, how it's going to impact the houses across the street, the property across the street, because right now the drainage goes straight across over to our properties um, from that development when you put in a bunch of concrete, bunch of houses, and um, I just want to make sure that, that that's being looked at as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I think it's safe to say that what so what we've talked about about the phase the phase one right that's a that's a as you said that's a study that happens in order to purchase land or about at the time of purchasing them that's the point exactly like you said these more significant um, reviews uh, evaluation soil I don't know it all has to happen again I'm not that I'm not that person either but I've done enough of these zoning hearings that's going to come likely at the zoning level I keep doing that I mean, it's going to have to go through that county engineer. It might have to go through, I mean, it's soil and water. It could be EPA if it's the right level of wetlands. Um, I don't know if you've read Army Corps involved in any of that kind of stuff. So those are what you're all talking about as far as wetlands. Those, that type, when we say environmental, I get that that's what you mean. Those kinds of studies, I don't know if I've ever seen them happen at an annexation phase but they almost always happen if they're required at the zoning phase later in the process. How do you make sure they're required? The, count, the, the various jurisdictions have those requirements, and the developer would, would know that. You know, they, they have to come in to the county with certain levels of commitments and, and assurances. They would have engineers on their staff, on their team, that they, ha that they have doing the soil and the water and the wildlife and the, those components. Right, that's the county. That's the county, drainage engineer. And that's and that is one of the big, well, look at that storm runoff. So if you see those retention ponds, that's that's the that's where that storm runoff is going to go. But again, it's still too early. That might change, but that's definitely one of the studies that's that would that will be impacted. Because my understanding of it, you guys got some flow issues going across the street that people's house, uh, yards get flooded. Uh, we were told that's going to be completely alleviated. So as as we see these studies through the zoning process and council sees that, we'll know more. Uh, but these types of tests are required and, and definitely will be done. Jennifer Cornell from 5285 Eastland Drive. And um, my question is, they're talking about across the street. Um, the development that I live in, the small development, is down the hill from where these houses will be placed. And so how far out does this study of water flow environmental study have to go? Because I'm not very far from it, and, but I'm downhill. And my concern is water flow. Um, there's a lot of other concerns that we've talked about tonight, but that is a, a big one. So I want to know how far out that has to go. And then I have one more question for you guys. I think I can safely say that most of these people moved to Bethel Township for our small community and for our rural area. And um, you guys like New Carlisle and you want to live right in it, and that's great. But we moved there for a reason. And I think if you look at why, if you lived in that position where we are at, what would you want for your home? Thank you. Thank you. Natalie, was you coming? <laughs> Natalie Donahue, 7835 Agonrod Road. And um, for the record, I am a school board, Bethel School Board. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Natalie Donahue, 7835 Agonbrod Road. Um, for the record, I am a school, Bethel School Board member, but I'm here tonight as a private citizen. And um, thank you all for being here tonight. I've spoken before our township trustees for many a year, and uh, thank you for allowing um, the Bethel Township Miami County <laughs> residents um, to speak at your um, city council meetings as well over the past couple of months. Um, two things I wanted to 
definitely say um, for the planning and zoning, when you meet on Tuesday and as you continue to look at that, um, my perspective is a half an acre is, is small. I prefer five acre lots myself. Um, and we've, been, we've shown that we can sell those pretty quickly. Like in six months, we sold maybe 10 of them. I'm not sure what the number was exactly. So those can sell just as well. Um, so uh, that is something to consider. I know there's a happy medium, but that's that's my preference. But um, the other thing I did want to ask is, are your current residents um, of, of the city of New Carlisle, how often do you ping them? Are they getting all the services and needs that they need? Are they lacking? Anybody have any um, complaints or any concerns? I mean, as, this, as your city continues to grow with the new developments, are you going to be uh, able to uh, reduce that risk for them all as this impacts them? Like, will you have the services? Do you know? How often do you ping them to know that they're all happy with what they have? I don't know if there's surveys. I think that's, I, that's a loaded question. Uh, we, are, we, we have a lot of services that our city uh, provides and people love. And the past eight years that I've been city manager, we have made great strides in fixing our street. Our pool makes money. Um, Twin Creeks has maxed out. Um, our general fund is in the millions, which is it's never been before. So, um, and recently we were ranked number two in the state for the healthiest housing market. So that should tell you that people love to come to New Carlisle and stay. So with this increased tax revenue that we're going to have, we'll actually be able to expand on those services and actually and make a better community, not only for the residents, but also for those who live around it that actually come into New Carlisle and take advantage of our services. Okay. Thanks. It wasn't really meant to be a loaded question. It, it was an hard, honest it, question. It was hard to answer. Okay. Um, the other thing I was going to ask um, along that line, uh, sorry, um, was that with all these expansions going on at the same time, have you planned for the kind of chaos or disruption that's going to be for the city? Um, or have you looked down the four years or five or six years? Um, what are you doing now to plan can, for that? Can you please define chaos? I'm sorry? Can you define chaos? We've looked at our growth pattern, so every next 10 years, we're going to add about half our population. So our population will still be under 10,000. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of chaos that's going to cause, but this is this is staggered growth over the course of 10 years to allow us to, uh, for any areas that we may be lacking that we not know of, be able to accommodate that and to adjust. Um, but, you know, this is the same process that happens in cities all across the United States. Uh, this type of annexations and these type of developments have been going on since for a very long time. We have, you know, when the Silver Lake Estates was uh, developed, we found the minutes and it was the same same concern. So um, when we talk about the density, the size of the lots, just that, that's just current housing trends. These developers are doing massive studies to see what people want. Um, but, you know, I mean, as far as that, uh, I, I think generally our citizens are pretty happy. And, it, and maybe it's not chaos, but it, it is for perhaps for the people who might be dealing with driving through the construction in the different areas every day or trying to get a kid to school. It's just a general question. Sure. And then I was just wondering, prior to the development and the, the, the uh, question of annexation of this piece of property, um, how, how often do you uh, update your list and... How long is your list for your wish items for the city of New Carlisle? Is that was that documented? Like, do you review I, I, that every I, I, year? I she's wanting to, she's wanting to know our wish list, right? Yes. Our what? So, so our CPI is done every year. Okay, every year. The wish list. Wish W I S H. Wish list for what? <laughs> our, our, for just our our general. CPI, like the mayor said, we update about? that every our, year. The city manager and, and the department heads get together and they go, "We want this," and most of the time we laugh at them, and uh, we go, "Well, we'll see what happens." And if we have the funds to buy whatever it is they want, like this year we bought. Uh, that utility truck, I think, for the water department or road department? Yeah, so our capital improvement plan, I think that's what you're referring to. Uh, we made great strides since the city's actually been able to receive some money and have some funds left over. So in that capital improvement plan, we go three, uh, I mean, sorry, five years out. So we have to submit that three months prior to the submission of the budget. It is something we do every year. Um, it's generally a great environment that we work in. Um, our budget's very tight. Um, we don't overspend. We don't, we, we were, do very good with 
with our money. We've been able to do some great things with our CIP over the next um, five years and the past five years. But that is done at a five-year interval, uh, three months before. Um, and it's pretty. It's a pretty good capital improvement plan. Okay, thank you. Is that listed on your website somewhere that you know of? Uh, no, it's not, but we can, if you do a public records request, we can definitely get that out to you. Okay, thank you. And then just one last thing. I just want to say um, that uh, obviously I'm against annexation in general because of the ethical idea of taking somebody else's property for your benefit. But um, I do also feel bad for the family that um, my husband and I convinced to move to Bethel Township, their driveway will be exactly across from the entrance on New Carlisle Road. And for us personally, it's, it's a sad thing that, you know, um, the, this family had four children, just finished going through Bethel schools, and now they'll be faced with the, um, you know, a, a very dense, as the, as the way it's already zoned, very dense um, development across the street. And that's heartbreaking for me, for them. So so just wanted to voice that. Thank you, though, for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. I'm only keep another minute. Okay. I have to say my name. We're watching. Do I have to say my name? Marion Layton, 8085 East New Carlisle Road. Uh, now that you have two, I'll say, developers that have submitted plans, are you going to pursue both developments at the same time? Or you can go up north and pursue that one and leave Bethel Township alone? At, at this time, I don't think council or anybody in the administration is prepared to answer that. Most likely we will if we so decide to or if they want us to oh. annex them. But again, we don't go looking for land, they come oh, to I know. us. I, I realize that, but someone on Facebook had asked, said, one of three plats that are planning, Dan Roadwall, who is not here, said, actually, we have only two that have submitted plans. So I was just wondering if you're going to pursue two at a time. We will pursue them as they come in. We are not at the liberty if the developer wants to submit an application to go in front of our plan. I'm sorry. If we will pursue them as they get submitted to the city. How basically how that works is we do a preliminary plan, and we've had two developers submit site plans. Um, one is not a site, full site plan, full set, but an overview of what's going on. But they, it, is their, it is their decision to submit an application to go in front of our planning board. So that's at the liberty of the developer when they go into the planning board. So if it happens to be congruent at the same time, then we'll have to look at those at the same time. Um, there could be three, could be four. Okay, so in other words, if DDC doesn't like what you don't like what DDC is proposing and DDC says no we can't do half acre lots you can go see what the one up north to talk about I, I didn't hear what you said oh. when DDC comes with their proposal and dense housing and you tell you say we want two houses an acre and DD says no you are also allowed to say no. Well, that's speculation. I'm not going to answer that because I don't know what they're going to request. That will be discussed in planning board and through the proper channels after that. Okay. But I, I, I'm not going to speculate. I, do, I don't know. That's fine. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. Anyone else? Jane, Jane Sessions, 4108 South Dayton Brant Road. I'm concerned about um, the traffic, and you keep saying scarf. Um, do you mean going from the corner of Lake and Scarf down to 571? Because nobody's going to go that way. Um, there's too many twists and turns. You have to go real slow. And when you go from that intersection on Lake Avenue into New Carlisle, the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. Um, I don't think all those new people are going to go the speed limit. So I'm concerned about um, more crashes. And when you are on Dayton Grant, 
usually people will go from that intersection over on New Carlisle Road and go down Dayton Brant. They're not going to go on New Carlisle, Ro New Carlisle Road over to 201 because that's a very dangerous intersection. You can't see the people coming. Also, people have died on um, Dayton Brant and 571 pulling out in front of people, getting seriously injured or they die. So having that many new houses in, if there was an easy way for people to get out, then it wouldn't be so concerning. But for people to go down um, Lake Road for over a mile, 25 miles an hour, um, that's asking a lot. A friend of mine, he would, he would just come up Brant Pike, Dayton Brant, over on New Carlisle Road and up late to his house because he was on the west side of the town. Um, on the development, um, some things to consider, do you have, um, will there be a playground and sidewalks? Yeah. On both sides or one side or? Okay, and um, do you have something about playgrounds, playground for every so many houses or something like that? So there won't be any playground? Okay, well that's something I would consider. And um, what Natalie was talking about on the construction is the these vehicles will have to come up um, Lake Avenue, 25 miles an hour, or come charging up Dayton Brant, going very fast. I'm concerned because I live on Dayton Brant, and I'm, I'm going to be running into all the, these things too. But my main concern is that you're putting a lot of people where they can't get out. If they, if they could get out, if they could go on to 235 or if they could go down to 571 easily, it wouldn't be so concerning. But Dayton Brant is going to get torn up, and it's a very narrow road. So, and also, um, will the contractor be um, providing internet to these houses? Do you have internet provided to the, um, because I don't. No, you don't live in a city, and that would be a private endeavor. We don't do fiber, we don't pay for fiber, so Time Warner may come in there and do utilities, but I'm sure they'll have access to the internet. Why well, don't? Where do you, you, you don't live in the city though. Mr. Mayor said everyone in the city has internet. So when this right. development gets done, I'm sure on, Time on Warner or someone will come Road, in For the last something. 20 years, we have asked and never gotten any internet. Well, this might be the opportunity that is actually going to be closer to your house, that Time Warner or AT&T or whoever does it may actually extend it down that way. Well, so, that would be something the contractor sure. could negotiate. No, well, we, no, what would happen, what would happen is if, that if, if that yeah, area was developed, then just, you know, um, AT&T, Spectrum, whoever it may be, would want to move their, their lines. But they would want to go to the new houses, but not the old ones. Right, no, they wouldn't. They would probably go to where the, the group of houses would be. But if you wanted to um, give us a bone, that would be something. It, it wouldn't be up to us. It wouldn't be up to the developer either. It's, it's, up, it's up to the internet provider, and they go where the money's at. If you want internet at your home, I know if you contact them and you pay to have the wires ran, they'll run internet to your home. But no. you have to pay for all the they installation. Won't. They won't. Even you, and we try. Even to pay for the installation, they won't do it? No. Well, I had it done over in another part of the county, but that's another subject. Okay, that's it. Thank you. We got uh, one coming up, and then you'll be next, okay? Michelle Frogner, 7105 South Palmer Road. Do your new Carlisle students go to Tecumseh schools? Go to Tecumseh schools? All of, all of your new Carlisle students? 
most, but that's, you feed into Tecumseh schools. Well, my comment would be, as an educator of 35 years, I'm retired, that if you support Tecumseh schools, you should be fighting for every new student, potentially in the future, to go to Tecumseh schools, if you support your school's district. Thank you. Thank you. said except one thing. First of all, I'm Virginia Keeper. I'm married to that guy. That guy? You heard from him already. He's in the record. Tom Keeper, 5833 Scarf Road. So I am impacted by the southbound traffic that will come out of this huge development. So all of these studies that were talked about are fantastic, but I did hear um, a lot of sort of negativity, uh, particularly from one individual on the, this side of the room, who said really that he didn't care about what was gonna happen to us in Bethel Township. Yeah, I just, sometimes I make things up, so. Um, so I want to know who's going to do the good neighbor slash human impact study. Can somebody do that? Okay, can you, can, can we hire somebody to do that? Yes, I'm, I'm wasting time. I'm sorry, no, but okay. everybody's talking about water, important, cars, important, traffic, important, but nobody's, but we are, in a way, all addressing a human impact on this, on this neighborhood. And for New Carlisle to not really care about the impact of potentially 294 homes um, abutting up to a neighborhood of a very few homes, very dense, very uh, not dense environments. It's, it's really a huge omission. So I would just ask, as you are contemplating these things that you're going to be presented with next Tuesday, that you really do keep in mind the human impact on this region. It does affect us all. All the schools are going to be affected. Everything, town, traffic, 235, all these streets. So please, human impact. Somebody? Thank you. Ma'am, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, on, on a comment you made. Can you tell me who said they didn't care about Bethel Township or Miami um, County? I'm not sure I'm supposed to do that. Or, am, I, am I allowed at the school board meetings? I'm not allowed to speak directly to a person. You can talk to me if you like. He wants to know who the person is, though. Yeah, wait, wait just a minute. Let's let her get done, and then you can come up. Well, okay. Am I allowed to say who just the person say it. was? Just say it. It was the vice president of the board, that fellow there. On the, with, I do the not remember him saying that comment. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Vice Mayor, did you make that comment? You said you don't care about Bethel's issues, and I wrote down, what about good neighbor policy? That was my reaction to that statement. You I don't kinda, recall you making... Brush, you brushed it off. I don't recall making any such statement, but I do recall expressing concern of the impact on Silver Lake. Okay. Silver and Lake is to the north of this area. We are to the south. The lady with the peach shirt on, she's to the west. You know, ev everybody, there's a human impact to every decision you guys are going to make, and ladies. And I just wish that, I hope that you will have that on your list, the top of the list. Can I ask okay. you a question? That's it. It okay. seems like you guys, are coming, you. you guys are coming to us and we're in council to do all this stuff, look at traffic studies, and you say this human nature side of things be good neighbors. Yep. Have you ever thought about what, why we need this? About the taxes that's going to generate? About the longevity of the city of New Carlisle itself? We have a right to grow. Sure. The fact that we're here entertaining this annexation sure. agreement is, should be signs that we're willing to work with you. Sure. But at the same time, too, we should have a right to make sure the longevity of the city is there. And but, I've been looking at the finances for the past 10 years. The city needs new income tax. They absolutely do. We sure do. And we can't. Believe me, if this was the last one out of three, I think we'd probably make, I'm not speaking right. not on for them, but it may be a little different, but we can't, right. but we can't count on something that's not there yet. Correct. So I know I we have potential having force development, but right now, this is the one that's further in the progress. So we have right. to address that, but I, we have a right for the city to grow. You do. And I think a lot came up here tonight and asked you what your plans are. My husband did. He said, you have a plan and there's no answer. I mean, I've been coming to about, I came to about three meetings since 
since February in New Carlisle, and I heard a lot of, oh, no, we don't, we don't know anything. We, we don't know we anything don't, yet until they submit, and that's going to happen know. on Tuesday. It's astounding. It, How could you not know anything? There's so much at stake here. Ma'am? Yes, sir. Tuesday, it starts with the planning okay, board, so, so that's when they'll have the I know chance I'm to get in I know I'm going to be Tuesday. So it's crazy. Okay. It's crazy. Okay, I'm done. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. All right. Would anybody else like to talk? We know traffic's a problem. We know the school's a problem. Okay. Let's move on to, to a few more comments. Mr. Silver Lake. I can't ever remember his name, but I know he's Mr. Silver Lake. I'm not Mr. Silver Lake, by oh, okay. any means. Uh, 4720 South Scarf Road, also known as Silver Lake. Uh, obviously, I'm here against it. For a lot of people have different information, but I'm against it for environmental and habitat. Mm -hmm. Some new information. Jeff Morford, M O R F O R D. The Ohio. I've had the Ohio Department of Natural Resources visit Silver Lake and its wetlands. Aaron Rourke and Rick Gardner, the state's chief botanist, came out just this Tuesday. Within 10 minutes walking through what I call the swamp, Rick Gardner said this is easily a class three wetlands, which is the top quality wetlands. They spent three and a half hours surveying the property and asked if they could return to do more detailed exploration in a few weeks when things bloom out a little more. Also, the Miami County Park District, who has environmental easement on the portion of the wetlands, are planning to come out. I had a guy come down from Cleveland, environmentalist, says the same thing. It's just sort of repeating that. But all these parties are concerned about the health of the lake and the wetlands. From where the valley starts, it's almost like eight tenths of a mile to where it goes before Silver Lake, downhill to the lake, through the wetlands, out the spillway, and I know it continues beyond that. These are all in jeopardy. It's called the Honey Creek Corridor. Uh, I'm going to skip around a little bit here, but again, I hear more a few times that the city fears that the developer will sue the city if they don't receive annexation, water, sewage, etc. I ask when it goes to zoning, if you have any concerns about, legal concerns about this and ramifications from any kind of environmental issues, I ask just leave it zoned agricultural. Also, again, if the city of New Carlisle fears lawsuits, my question is, is this the type of developer you want to get involved with? Under normal conditions, I would say a developer looks at a piece of property and he works through the state and government to find out how close I can be to a certain piece of property or people or schools or whatever the story is. Under normal conditions, maybe the developer isn't far enough from the lake and the wetlands. But I think this lake is more unique than that and should get a much wider berth for its health. Uh, not too many people here from New Carlisle, but I would like to reiterate, on Tuesday, April 12th, I went door to door serving a few of New Carlisle residents. Three hours later, I knocked on 40 doors. 25 people were home and answered the door. One person was indifferent, two people didn't speak English, and one said he worked for the city and would rather not talk to me. Out of the next 21 houses, I got 25 New Carlisle citizens that were against the development. Next, I parked on Lake Street at Sacred Heart Church on Thursday, April 14th for six hours with a sign on my car and got 92 signatures from New Carlisle residents. That's a total of 117, just me, just knocking on doors. Uh, so there, there is New Carlisle people against this thing. Don't need that one. Okay, and I've heard before, and this will be a little sporadic here, just what I've heard tonight. Uh, the city is uh, looking forward and taking care of the well-being and growth of New Carlisle. Also, your actions should be a reflection of what your citizens want. Find out what your citizens want. If they want this or they don't. You can, again, you can stop this with your zoning. 
Developer says the size lot is what's popular. He's a salesman. What else is he going to tell you? The city manager mentioned that a few local cities have been sued and lost over annexation disagreements. Is that true? Not true, okay. I would also like to offer that a few local communities has stopped the development with a referendum and a vote. I appreciate your time. It's nice Thank you guys got together. And I hope it continues the conversation, because that's what it's going to take. A lot of times there's no conversation. It's just you guys listen or you guys listen. There's got to be some kind of interaction so we all are on the same page. Thank you. My understanding on this uh, purchase of this, I forget how many acres it is, that it is contingent. The purchase is contingent on being an annexed into the city. So if the contract says, and to my knowledge, we don't have a copy of that contract and probably won't ever see it, but if that is true and the council or the city decides not to move forward with the annexation, he has no way to come back and sue us because it's per his contract he signed. And if he does not get annexed or the annexation does not happen, then the, he can he has an out of the contract and he doesn't buy it and he moves on. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions regarding the annexation agreement? Or is it just more about traffic studies and stuff like that? Because it's, it's, it's all speculation at this point in time until we see the traffic study results and all that stuff. So I just want to focus on the annexation agreement components. Um, and if we're done with that, maybe council can entertain um, ending the meeting. So I was going to go back to, um, wait, uh, where'd he go? No. If you want to talk, you need to come up here. No, but well, hang on. We still like you, though, but this will get it in the recording. Testing, testing. There you go. My name's Stephen James Tobin Smith. Okay, never mind. I live on Eastland Drive. You done? Okay. So the bottom line is no. we are okay with you guys building down 235 all you want. We are going to stop this at that 115 acres. Guarantee it. Okay. So other than that, I'm just letting y'all know. So we have two attorneys already retained, and we're ready to go. So I, you know what? I, I'm done. I appreciate what y'all are doing. Yes, Tecumseh Strong. Yes, my daughter goes to Tecumseh. Yes, my son went to Tecumseh. But other than that, y'all can roll your eyes, do what you want. It's, it, it is what it is. So, you know, there again, have a nice night. And Thank you, buddy. Read. You know, do what you guys got to do. Uh, I think our meeting is going to conclude unless there's something just brand new. And I don't think there is. I'd like to think. Policing, fire and EMS and policing and police. You guys, you guys are still trying to decide between be... Clark County and Miami County. At least one of the meetings I went to, Heather no. Don, 4744 Scarf Road, if you need that for the record. I didn't but hear. policing, Miami County versus Clark County. Have sure. We talked about even like the the, the increase in with crime rates and everything with carriage trails, they have issues with the crime rates and not having enough response time. So that's going to be also a concern with the citizens if it goes to Miami County. What what kind of you know what's going to be an increase of policing? That's a great question. So um, we have I've had our county sheriff look into it. So we will enter into an agreement with the Miami County Sheriff that our contracted deputies would be able to patrol that specific area. Okay. So that should alleviate any kind of high crime. And we don't have a lot of high crime in New Carlisle, um, but we recently have added deputies, and I see us probably hopefully adding being able to add some more in the future. Right, but with any kind of development, any kind of density, especially when you're talking high density, people are going to be more 
to go to a higher density, just like when I did experience in Beaver Creek, higher crime rates, not being able to fire police people or people wanting to go into the profession of police to be able to police those areas effectively to make sure those crime rates remain low. Do you feel as though there's a crime rate problem in New Carlisle now? I feel like maybe it could be increased. There's not. Where our that's crime fine. stats are pretty good. So I was assuming that, that trend concern, would go though. on. But that's what we are working with. Uh, my that's also, that yeah, that's just something new. Sure. So. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to thank you for coming tonight. You kind of uh, put on the spot there, but uh, we like the residents to get to speak a little. I think, whether we believe it or not, I think we accomplished a few things. Sure. Uh, oh boy. Uh, I think we have accomplished a few things and uh, look forward to another meeting with you. And so you kind of know where we're at. We kind of know where you are and we'll have to see where we get to. So thank you for being here and we will be adjourned.